I've been asked to talk about the LASIK option for a 50-year-old presbyopic patient. Here are my financial disclosures. Relevant to this talk is that I'm a consultant for Carl Zeiss who have commercialized my algorithm for laser blended vision as their Presbyon product. Other than monovision, all three of the specific presbyopic surgical options fall into two main categories. Extending the depth of field or introducing multifocality, that is two or more foci in the same eye. Multifocal corneal ablations have been around since the early 90s, but the latest system uses a biaspheric multifocal corneal target surface, originally performed in both eyes, but because of poor safety and contrast, several iterations have come since then to reduce the multifocality and increase the anisometropia between the eyes to provide the range of vision. The use of these profiles is still quite limited due to the loss of contrast and reduction in quality of vision that they afford, particularly at distance and at night. Adjusting the Q slider has been used to target postoperative negative Q factor, but in myopic ablations, this causes a bifocal cornea with central islands, which significantly increase unwanted aberrations and cause loss of visual quality. What I'm going to focus on is a better option, using spherical aberration in the right doses to improve the depth of field and combine this with a micro anisometropia to provide modified binocular vision. Consider the increasing defocus along the top row, and let's look at the minus 150 defocus simulation. Adding spherical aberration to the same minus 150 defocus provides a much better edge detection, and that's thanks to the neural processing of this particular aberration, a natural feature of the human visual system. But the brain does not have to combine the dominant and non-dominant eyes with these two images, because neural processing means that the images that need combining are actually more similar, and certainly a long way from the disparity of the two eyes in the case of straight monovision. These are the results of our published study on plano presbyopic patients using the CRS Master Platform for programming presbyon profiles that induce a one and a half diopter depth of field in each eye. The dominant eye is set to plano, providing distance vision as if plano and intermediate vision as if the eye was minus 0.75, while the non-dominant eye is set to a nominal refraction of minus 150, which gives a depth of field providing distance vision as if the eye was minus 0.75 and the near vision as if the eye was minus 225. The accuracy of this procedure is excellent, as we'd expect for LASIK, with 89% of the eyes within a half and 100% of the eyes within one diopter of intended. Looking at the distance vision results, the post-op binocular distance uncorrected vision was excellent with 97% of patients seeing 2020, while interestingly the monocular distance vision was slightly less because of the loss of summation, and even 87% of these non-dominant near eyes were 2060 or better at distance. Looking at the near vision results, the binocular uncorrected vision greatly improved after surgery with the binocular near vision at J2 in 94% and J3 in 100% of patients. The dominant distance eyes also contributed to near vision as 80% of them were seeing font size 12 at near. This is a three-dimensional representation of the post-op distance and near visions, and you can see that out of these 71 patients, only two were outside of the 2020 J3 bracket both of these distance eyes would be easily enhanced onto target. The safety is excellent with no eye losing two lines and many gaining lines. The stability is excellent. The control of cylinder is superb as expected for LASIK. There is no change in contrast sensitivity at any spatial frequency. We know that four or more log units or patches of stereo are lost when anisometropia is minus 150 or more. We tested a subset of patients for their pre-op best spectacle corrected stereoacuity and how this changed after surgery to determine stereoacuity safety. We also measured the post-op anisometropic uncorrected stereoacuity as a measure of stereoacuity efficacy. In terms of stereo safety, therefore, only 5% of eyes lost up to three patches of stereoacuity with about 90% unchanged or with one patch loss. Most surprisingly, 63% had 100 seconds of uncorrected stereoacuity, and over 80% had 200 seconds. Sri Ganesh and his group studied patient-reported outcome measures in Presbyond and published extremely high satisfaction rates, with only 3 to 5% of patients still using spectacles for distance or near tasks, and none at intermediate. 
So in summary, the correction of planar presbyopia can be achieved very accurately with minimal compromise to visual quality, preservation of functional stereoacuity in a procedure that is suitable for over 95% of patients presenting. It's easily enhanced in the future if changes occur, and it is performed as a 10-minute bilateral simultaneous LASIK that heals in a few hours, and the patient is almost certainly reading the menu that evening to their partners or friends without glasses. Thank you.